Hello, 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 YouTube Nation. We are in the middle. Yes, hey, guess what, YouTube? We are a progressive school district at Elder Dean. We decided to start school two weeks early because we have massive amounts of construction to do on a yearly basis. And so, therefore, we have already had, we're like on, what, week number two, right? Yeah, we're on week number two. So, you're like, it's August. What are they doing in school? Well, we love to learn. That's all there is to it, so. We just can't wait. So today is what, August man, 28th? There we are, we're rolling with August 28th. It's a good time, we got Labor Day weekend coming up, which is a four day weekend, which I'm sure you guys all have wonderful plans. Um, I'm hoping to take my kids to the blast to get some ice cream after we do the bike ride. Hopefully you guys got good plans as well. Uh, but today, today we are not going to the blast. Today we are doing the zero product property, we're solving linear equations. We are doing some good mathematics stuff that should be reviewed for you guys. This is a college algebra class. And, uh, you know, we have a couple people down today. I think, uh, um, who was it? Uh, last hour we got, uh, so. Uh, the rest of you, if you have nothing to do, I guess you could sit around and, and finish up your mathematics to restart. Uh, you got a test next week, Friday. Evan, if you hear us from Atlanta, we hope you're having a great time. Solving equations, starting with linear ones. Single solution for linear equations. How do I solve this? Where do I start? Should be what? Negative five. So negative five x plus five equals three x plus two. Now what? Yep, combine like terms. Negative three x plus five is three x plus two. I like to put my variables onto the left side if possible. Get negative six x plus five equal to dos, subtract 5, negative 6, x equals negative 3, so x is 2. Yes? Oh, why not? Oh, it's 1 half. Yep, very good. See, sometimes that's a mistake that people make. They do association. For example, if I say the numbers 5 and 4, what, what number comes to your mind? 5 or 4? 9, okay, 4, 20. But generally, it's not one, and it's not four fifths. We're more likely to do addition and multiplication than we are uh, division or subtraction. So you can see, you see six and three, immediately you think two, um, but you don't think of one half, and so your brain kind of plays a trick on you. So be careful with that. Uh, add the six to both sides. This one has a fraction. Three halves, x is equal to 27. How do I get rid of the three halves? Multiply by two thirds. So we're multiplying by two, we're dividing by three. You can perform it in either order. I like to do 27 divided by 3 because it makes the number smaller. That gives me 9 times 2 is 18. And then all of a sudden you see a problem like C or D, and you see fractions. Your brain goes to just crud, right? You're like, oh my gosh, fractions. I hate them. Well, that's fine. All right? Nobody likes fractions. Anybody ever asked for like a big box of fractions for Christmas? No. Nobody ever did that, right? No. You never said, hey, teacher, could you please give me a worksheet that has more fractions? Please. I would like more decimals and fractions. No, never said that. So let's get rid of the fractions. You can totally do that. Suppose that Mr. Gens is uh, 180 pounds. We got Mr. Gens on one side, we got 180 pounds on the other side. You put five of me on one side, then you would just have to put five times 180 on the other side. There's no balance, right? So we're allowed to take equations and multiply both sides of the equation by the same number. So can you tell me a number you can multiply through by in order to get rid of the fractions? 15, that is your least common multiple of 3 and 5, or multiply through by 15. That way the fractions will go away. 15 divided by 3 is 5 times 4 is 20. So 20G, like 20 grand, that would be like my checking account. Uh, just 20G plus, oh, if you only knew. All right, now I got 15 times 12. 180, very good, is equal to 15 divided by 5 is 3 times 2 is 6, so 6G. All of a sudden, now uh, the fractions are gone, it's much easier to solve. Subtract the 20G, I get 180 is equal to negative 14G. Divide by negative 14, I get negative 90 over 7 is equal to G. So what about the next one? What do you want to multiply through by there? 30. 
30 divided by 5 is 6, so I will then distribute 6. 6 times 3x is 18x. 6 times 2 is 12. 30 divided by 3 is 10 times 1 is 10, so it's minus 10. 30 divided by 2 is 15, and 15 times 5 is 75x. 30 divided by 3 is 10. 10. There you have it. Fractions are gone. Minimal work to be able to make that happen. It is true you can create common denominators for everything, combine it, but it's really the same as just multiplying through by that. Um, we join together 18x plus 2 equals 75x plus 10. Anybody know what 18 minus 75x is? Negative 57x. Like Alex was one to win the game around the world back in elementary class. Does anybody remember playing around the world? You like that? Some kids love it, some kids don't. Sharon, if you're really good at it, you like it. Sharon, if you're not good at it, you don't like it. Not your favorite game. It's all right. Uh, there's a teacher out there. Oh, we're going to leave that all right. Yeah, I, I, I trust the teacher. I think that they're, they're going to be okay. But... It is not, I mean, some of you have seen me do it before, probably Carson, I'm guessing. There's times where kids are screwing around. I will go up there and scream. All right, zero product property. If A times B is equal to zero, then we know that something is true. So it's sometimes a case that maybe solving equations from a linear fashion doesn't uh, always work as well. Maybe we have higher degree uh, equations, say two or three, we use a zero product property. Zero product property just follows logic, which says if you have two things that are multiplied to give you zero, then we know something is true. What's that something we know is true? Either A or B is zero. So as we, we kind of investigate that, uh, there's two parts to it. Number one, it must be equal to zero. Number two, we must write it as multiplication or in factor form. So we're going to factor this guy and write it as x minus 5 times x plus 3 is equal to zero. So you can see that this is A and this is B. So either one of them would need to be zero in order to make that statement true. So what would make A zero? Five, and what would make B zero? Yeah, so five and negative three are my two solutions. And actually, you, you could, you know, you wouldn't even have to use A, B. You could say A, B, C is equal to zero. Then it could be A, B, or C, you know what I mean? Got lots of options there. Uh, so, But I get to correct your papers, and I get to see just the amazing mathematics that comes forth that you're trying to develop. It, it's not correct, but, um, you, but you're working through it. So you might try this. You factor out the x, and you get 6x minus 1 is equal to 5. You're invoking the 5 product property. And there's no such thing as the 5 product property. It's completely made up. See, if a times b is 5, then what do we know? We know nothing. We don't know anything. It, that tells us nothing. So you got to start with zero. But people will do this. They'll say, well, x equal to 5, and they'll solve that one as well. And uh, it, it's incorrect. So let's uh, let, let's try this. We're going to subtract 5 over. 6x squared minus x minus 5 equals 0. Does anybody see how the 6x squared minus x minus 5 factors? Good. 6x plus 5. Man, you guys are good. So what is x? Very good. Some people just write negative 5. They see the 5, they make it opposite. It's negative 5, 6, because you have to divide by the 6, and 1. If it didn't factor, what would you do? What if a quadratic didn't factor? Two options. Quadratic formula or complete square. Very good. What's different about letter C? It's cute. So you're going to have three solutions. The fundamental theorem of algebra, which we'll get to in chapter three, tells us that the degree of the polynomial tells us the number of solutions. Shelby saying, yes, she remembers that, right? Was that your favorite chapter last year? It'll be chapter six. Awesome. 
Awesome. We all have favorite chapters of algebra two. So yours is six. What was yours, Jada? All of them. Thank you. Good answer. X times that factors to two X minus one and two X plus one. So you can see you have three pieces here. So it's like A, B, C is equal to zero. So X would be what? Zero? One half? Excellent. You try letter D on your own. Go. Okay, so here we go. Uh, you take the X cubed minus 2X squared minus X plus 2 is equal to zero. You can see that in this situation you have a grouping option. So we have X squared times X minus 2. And then negative 1 times x minus 2. We factor out the x minus 2, and you're left with x squared minus 1. That factors as well. x minus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. Thus, three solutions. x is 2 and plus or minus 1. You good? Excellent review. Good job. This is a uh, review as well, but we have two problems left, uh, A and B, uh, for solving uh, by completing the square. I'm finding that people aren't remembering this as well as what I thought they might, so you need a refresher of this. Uh, do you remember the first step of completing the square? So there's, there's three ways of solving a quadratic. Factoring, quadratic formula, completing the square. Do you remember what you do first? Good job. Oh, maybe this was your favorite chapter, huh? Okay, that was chapter five. Chapter two. Now what? What, what? what are you guys? What are you guys saying? Because I, I this because I'm trying to figure out where people are at. This kind of confused me for previous hours. What are you remembering? The gap. What is this? I see. This is what I need. This is what's missing for me. Oh, is that so is that what she wrote okay because so I'm finding out that Miss Hansen taught you away and I want to see how it works so I can see it okay yeah okay all right so I'm, I'm hearing more and I want to continue to hear more I'm gonna to try to bring you into how I'm gonna to try to help you understand what to put there are you ready so we have x squared minus 10x we have x squared plus 18x we have x squared minus 6x. There's something we could put on the end here so it's a perfect square. They may know the number that goes here. Nope, not 100. 25. It's heck. Yeah, because it got, so 5 times 5 is 25, and, and or negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, and negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10. So it's half of that squared. So that would make this 81. That would make this 9. So you take half of it squared. So divided by 2 squared. So we're going to have 1. So we completed the square. And what, what it means that we completed the square is this trinomial is now a perfect square. What's different about the problems we did before is that there's, there's now a number other than 0 on the other side. That's not a problem because we're not going to factor. It's already factored. We're going to square root both sides. So we're using a square root method. X minus 1 is equal to plus or minus the root of 6. And so X is, you have to list plus or minus because we know there's how many solutions. 2. So that's how we get the 2. That's your indication that you have to use the plus or minus. You're square rooting a variable, so you got to list both solutions. So 1 plus or minus the root of 6. Coming back a little bit? Okay. So let's try one that was a little bit more challenging. How is B different? We'll end for the day on this. I'm hearing add the 1, and I'm hearing something about the 2x squared. 2x squared is not a perfect square. x squared is, correct? 2x squared is not. So we're going to divide off the 2 x squared plus x minus 1 half is equal to 0. And it works really well because you get 0 on the other side, right? So now I'm going to move the 1 half over. x squared plus x is equal to a half. So what number do we add in order to complete the square? 1 fourth. How do you get that? 
one divided by two is a half, and a half times a half is a fourth. A lot of people will say one right away, but a half times a half is a fourth. So we go one fourth. So this is going to be x plus one half quantity squared is equal to what's on the right side? Three quarters. Square root, both sides. x plus a half is equal to plus or minus. Square root of the top, I lose the square root of three. But the bottom, I can make it the two. Do those have common denominators? They sure do. So x is negative one plus or minus the root of three all over dos, which is Spanish for two. Coming back to you? Okay. Excellent work. So today's assignment is going to be on solving linear, quadratics, and completing the square type problems.